a Mecha Furby showdown in Vegas, an evil Tickle Me Elmo, and a Spider-Man cameo were all cut from the final version of the Mitchells vs. the Machines. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing the spectacular alternate ending of the Mitchells movie, plus all the deleted scenes you never got to see. Spoilers ahead of course, so take care. Although in the final movie, the Mitchells confront Pal and her robot army at the Pal Lab headquarters in Silicon Valley, originally the final confrontation with the AI villain was going to take place in Las Vegas. The movie's head of story, Guillermo Martinez, revealed that in an earlier version of the movie when Pal, who was male at that point, discovered he was about to lose, he activated every appliance in the city and used them to transform himself into a giant mecha Furby. Who would save humanity now? Search it. Search it. Zero results found. <laughs> and concept art from the movie shows how this enormous mecha Furby went on a rampage through Vegas as it chased the Mitchells in their car. Eventually, Katie and her family would have faced off against the mecha bot at Las Vegas's pyramid-shaped Luxor, which they would have driven up the side of, and then Katie would have launched herself at the giant Furby to take out its reactor core. Which reminds me of the moment in the final movie where Katie drives up the PAL building using Monchi in an attempt to deliver the kill code. Before the pandemic, The Mitchells was going to be released theatrically, and there were a couple of toilet-related jokes from the first trailer that ended up cut from the final film when it was released on Netflix. When the family stopped for a bathroom break, there was going to be a joke about Erin's less than salubrious hygiene habits. No time to wash your hands. Don't worry, I never do. Uh. However, producer Chris Miller said that joke felt irresponsible once the pandemic hit, and so it ended up being changed to something more innocuous. Come on, end of the world. Sorry. False alarm. I was just in there reading. And there was another deleted bathroom based gag from that first trailer where a smart robot toilet rebels against its human user. Sayonara. <laughs> The appliance attack at the mall, together with the Furby army, is one of the best and most popular parts of the movie. Run! <laughs> However, for a long time, the animation team couldn't get through to the right people at Hasbro for permission to use Furbies in the film, so they changed the scene to feature an alternate set of evil robot toys instead. The leader in that version was a Tickle Me Elmo style plush toy called Tickle Me Melmo, complete with an eye patch and metal arm, and his manner channeled in Morton Joe from Mad Max Fury Road. Commander, what say you? You bring wisdom from an ancient time. And it hath been written like lambs to the slaughter. They have. <laughs> In this version, Tickle Me Melmo also commandeered a team of microwaves he called the Valkyries, and ordered them to launch themselves and destroy the friendly robots Eric and Deborah Bot, who were helping the Mitchells. Launch the Valkyries. The robots will be destroyed. I live. I die. I live again. To Valhalla! <laughs> Get down, you sweet boys! Some of Tickle Me Melmo's creepy sidekicks that didn't make it into the movie were reading Randall, who won't deactivate, listens to everything, and does what he wants. There was also Tea Time Tina, who, like Randall, not only listens and spies on you, but also has a killer karate chop action. Of course, they eventually got Hasbro's approval to use the Furbies, but director Mike Rianda said that earlier versions of the creepy Furby army used even darker language that implied they feasted on flesh and were seemingly sent by Satan. In the final movie, a pal-chipped toaster ominously warns the Mitchells of the mayhem that's about to kick off. However, originally there was going to be a malicious toy puppy with demonic red eyes, which first threatened the family, attacked them, and then summoned the other appliances and playthings, including a toy helicopter, race car and wheelie duck, a giant penguin, and a jack-in-the-box. Look, Machi, he's like you. Humans, your kind is forbidden in this realm. Now! Prepare for your doom! Uh oh. <laughs> what is it gonna do? Bark at me to death? Yeah! Ah! Ah! The plastic is sharper than you would think! It's sharper than you would think! Awaken, brothers! What? What's 
going on? The friendly, defective robots Eric and Debrabot 5000 were a wonderful pair of characters, and there was a funny and also sweet deleted scene where Linda teaches Debrabot a little more about what it means to be part of a family. Look at this foolish mother goose. She's slowed down by these small weak geese. Why does she not simply eat them for power? That's her family. That's what we humans do. We look out for each other. That is most illogical. Well, if you were in trouble, would you leave your buddy behind? I... I would not. This is most curious. See? We're more alike than we- Are you eating crayons? <laughs> no. Thematically, this deleted scene fits well with the moment in the movie when Linda goes back to save Eric after he's trapped by a falling column during the giant Furby attack. Thank you, human. Are you now my mother? By the way, I can't help but feel the moment where Linda catches Deborah Bosch eating crayons and they deny it is a little callback to Mike Rianda's short film work, which he made when he was studying at Cal Arts. Frank, are you eating crayons? No, it really looks like you are. Are you calling me a liar? In a somewhat brutal but darkly very humorous deleted scene, a mysterious character called Dirk McTavish showed up briefly to rescue the Mitchells during the robot attack at the dino stop. Is everyone all right? Well, now we are. The name's Dirk McTavish, 45th Infantry Armed Combat Unit, and I know the only way to... <laughs> Oh, well that's a disappointment. Not for me. <laughs> His square-jawed, long-haired look reminds me a bit of the leading man who features on the DVD cover for Robo Slayers 4, and Linda certainly seems into it. I love the little detail of a lock of his hair waving in the breeze that the animators put into this, which adds to the overall action movie star vibe and just cracks me up. Although apparently the president of Sony Animation found this scene hilarious, I wonder whether it was ultimately cut for time and pacing, and perhaps as being a little dark or coming out of nowhere for the end film. In the final movie, the Mitchells get into PAL Labs HQ by disguising themselves as robots as per Katie's dope plan. In an earlier version though, there was a humorous scene where the family figured out what their best camouflage options would be. What about Katie? Katie? Ah! How's this for camouflage? I found these parts lying around on the ground. That's a genius, honey. You're like a little huntress. You're getting it though. Are we camouflaged? Guys, you are freaking me out. A moment's cut from the final movie that we get a snippet of in the first trailer occurs when the Mitchells are hiding from the robots in the ice box at the dino stop. Technology rising up. This was part of a longer monologue by Rick about the dangers of technology, where he basically said, I told you so. According to producer Phil Lord, it ended up getting the chop because it undermined the stakes and perhaps makes Rick's character less likable. The evil pal, voiced by Olivia Coleman, made for an excellent villain. Poke, poke, swipe, pinch, zoom. Shrek. Bring me pizza. Play me Taylor Swift. No, I hate that song. Give me some nachos. Really work it into the crevices. However, originally pal was going to be a cloud-based computer brain, which I think might have made her feel more reminiscent of the antagonist computer Hal in 2001 A Space Odyssey, which pal's name and the robot's red dot already referenced. The filmmakers realised that making her an actual cell phone would be much funnier and approached Coleman to voice the character based on her Oscar winning performance in The Favourite and her ability to be incredibly funny, then turn on a dime to scream and be menacing. Place me on the table, I wish to flop around in a blind rage. <laughs> Many of the Mitchells' filmmakers, including producers Phil Lord and Chris Miller, were also involved in another of Sony's hit animations, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and took inspiration from some of the experimental style of that film, which is likely why the Mitchells vs. the Machines almost had a Spider-Man cameo. In an interview with Inverse, director Mike Rianda said he tried to get a kind of dishevelled, lumpy Spider-Man in the background of a shot, but the pressure was on to just finish the movie. Given the critical acclaim and popularity of the Mitchells, though, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Mitchell's Easter egg or even cameo pop up in a future Spider-Verse film. Although we didn't get that Spider-Man Easter egg in the Mitchells, I found well over a hundred other awesome references, Easter eggs and secrets hidden in the movie. Tap here to discover all those in my Things You Missed video, or click the link in the video description. And if you want to see more amazing pieces of the Mitchells concept art, including alternate and deleted scenes and character designs such as Lady Monchi, check out the Art of the Mitchells vs. the Machines book. I'll add a link where you can get a copy in the description below. So do you wish any of these deleted scenes had made it into the final film? Comment below with your thoughts on the movie and the cut scenes. And if you enjoyed this, I really appreciate a thumbs up and a share. You can tap left for all those Mitchells movie Easter eggs, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee ki movie lovers!